This is a video demonstration on journal analysis, posting, and trial balance. In this video, I'm going to work the solution to example number one. This example involves the Adams Company, and we've been provided with the chart of accounts for this company. And before we go any further on this particular problem, it's good to take a look at the company's chart of accounts just to familiarize ourselves with this particular company. In this company, I see several assets, cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, and office equipment. I see one liability, accounts payable. I see the capital, the withdrawals account, one revenue account, which is services revenue, and a utilities expense. So that just gives us an idea of what we're dealing with, the type of company. It looks like it's a fairly small, simple company. It's a proprietorship because I only see one owner on capital. And that just helps us as we go forward and work on these uh, transactions. Now it says they had the following transactions which occurred in the month of January. And we have a whole series of different transactions that transpired. And then on the requirements, number one, they want us to prepare the necessary journal entries for each transaction. Number two, we're then going to post those journal entries to the T accounts. And then finally, we're going to prepare a trial balance. Now to do all of this, I'm going to utilize Excel. That just makes things a little bit easier and a little bit cleaner as far as how it's presented. If you wanted to, you could use Excel. I'm going to provide some Excel templates on the class website. I'm also going to provide some PDF templates that you could simply print out and work on if you wanted to. Or you could just do this on paper. It's totally up to you. But for the journal entries, I just have a column for the date, the account title, and then a debit and credit column. So we'll focus first on the journal entries. And for every transaction, we will uh, record the appropriate entry. So the first transaction is occurring on January the 1st. And it says that Adams invested $150,000 cash and $22,000 in office equipment in the company. So anytime the owner invests these things, that's going to be recorded in capital. And notice that the owner has invested two different assets because both cash and office equipment, they're both assets. So this is going to be on the first. And in this case where we have two different assets. We have cash being invested. So I want to debit cash. And we also have some office equipment being invested. So since both of those are assets, I want to debit because remember, debiting an asset increases it. Now the amount of cash that they're investing is 150,000. The amount or value of the equipment that they're investing was given to us as 22,000. And those are both debits. Now to make this journal entry balance, I'm going to need a credit. So I'd have to have 172000 on the credit side to make this balance. And what is this going to go to? It's going to go to G. Adams Capital. Because remember, every time the owner invests, that always increases capital. And of course, capital is credit positive. So we're going to establish the assets and establish the value and capital at the same time with that particular journal entry. So that takes care of that transaction. Then we had a transaction in January 2nd. The company prepaid $6,500 cash for 12 months rent for an office. Now anytime we have a transaction like this where they simply give us one amount, we know that's going to simply be a two-line journal entry for that amount. So that means on January 2nd, I can go ahead and record a $6,500 journal entry. And I know it's going to be $6,500 uh, twice because it's a two-line entry. Now in this case, what we're doing is we are paying for rent. If you go back and read the what we did here, we paid for rent. We went ahead and paid for 12 months. So that is a prepayment. Now, even though that's an expense, because we're paying for that in advance, that's actually an asset. It is prepaid rent. So that needs to be the debit title. And then on the credit side, since we are paying for this with cash, 
we want to credit cash because that's $6,500 less cash that we now have. And, and of course, crediting an asset decreases it. So that takes care of that transaction. Then on January the 3rd, they purchased on credit $17,000 in office equipment and $2,000 in office supplies. Payment is due in 10 days. So basically, we're just purchasing two assets, but we're not actually paying for it. We're charging it. So that makes it a little different. So it's $17,000 office equipment, $2,000 office supplies. So on the third, we've got the office equipment. That's an asset. We've got the office supplies. That's also an asset. We're buying $17,000 on equipment. We're buying $2,000 in supplies. Now together, those two debits add up to $19,000. So we need $19,000 on the credit side to make it balance. Now remember, we haven't actually paid for it. We're charging it. It's credit. So that means we owe for this. So that's a liability. And in this case, it is the liability of accounts payable. So that would be the proper way for, to record that transaction. Then on the 6th, we completed services for a client. We collected 13,500 cash. So this is on the 6th. This is a simple journal entry for $13,500. It says we collected that money. So of course we can debit cash. Why did we collect that money? We provided services to a client. Well, that's revenue. So I'll credit service revenue. And of course, the key to that is revenue accounts are credit positive. And that keeps a running total of all the money that we've made in revenue. So that'd be the proper way for that transaction to be recorded. Then we have January the 9th. Completed services for a client worth 6000 The client is required to pay within 30 days. So this is on the 9th. The amount in this case is 6000 we completed the services, so that's service revenue as a credit. Now this transaction though, this is going to be a little different than the one that I recorded previously on the 6th. The difference here is, in this case, the client has not paid. They actually owe us this money. So we would record that in a slightly different way. Whenever someone owes us money, that would be accounts receivable. And of course, accounts receivable is an asset. And that shows and establishes when we debit that, that they owe us that $6,000. Next transaction is on the 13th. Paid $19,000 to settle an account payable. So this is on the 13th. It's $19,000. We are paying cash. So of course, we have to get rid of cash with a credit. But what are we paying here? Well, it says we paid this to settle an account payable. So notice previously, I have a credit to accounts payable for 19,000. Well, if I'm settling this, I want to debit accounts payable. And that will remove that liability from the books. So that's the proper way to get rid of these liabilities once they are settled. And that was definitely been settled because we've paid the full amount due. The next transaction is on January the 19th. Paid $7,000 cash for the premium on a 12-month insurance policy. So this is on the 19th. This is $7,000. Now we had a transaction very similar to this earlier where we prepaid rent. This one's very similar. The only difference here is we're prepaying insurance. So we'll debit prepaid insurance and credit cash in order to record that one. Next transaction is on the 22nd. Received $6,000 from a client for services completed on January the 9th. So it's the 22nd. The amount of money involved is $6,000. We are receiving $6,000 cash. Now I've got to be a little bit careful on a journal entry like this. 
on the credit side, what I really want to credit is accounts receivable. Now, why is it accounts receivable? Because this $6,000 right here is that original receivable back on the 9th. We bill that client for $6,000. They owe us. Now they've paid us, and we credit accounts receivable. The reason I'm pointing this out is a lot of people are thrown off when they read that because it says receive $6,000 from a client for services completed and as soon as you see services completed a lot of people have a tendency to think okay service revenue but really we've already recorded that revenue right there it's already been recorded this is just collecting the money on the receivable so you got to watch out for little things like that because if you're not careful you'll accidentally put it to the wrong account title the next transaction is on the 25th completed work for another client on credit worth 11,000. So this is on the 25th. This is 11,000. And we know exactly what to do because we had a, a transaction almost just like this earlier. It's work that we've completed for a client on credit. So we debit accounts receivable. They owe us the 11,000. We credit service revenue to show that we have completed the revenue. So we've done one like that before. So once you do these again and again, it becomes much easier when little things like that show up again. Now, 28th, Adams withdrew $2,500 cash for personal use. So it's the 28th. The amount is $2,500. I'm going to credit cash because that's cash being taken out. What am I going to debit here? Well, this is the owner withdrawing the money for personal use. Remember, we have to keep the business and the personal separate. So this is actually going to be a debit to G. Adams withdrawals. Remember, anytime the owner is putting things into the business, it goes to capital. Whenever they're taking money out, it goes to withdrawals. Next transaction is on the 29th. Purchase $750 additional office supplies on credit. So the amount here is $750. It is office supplies that we're purchasing. That's an asset, but notice it's on credit. So I don't want to credit cash. I want to credit accounts payable. And then the last transaction, which is on the 30th, Paid $1,250 cash for the monthly utility bill. So this is $1,250. We're paying cash, so cash must be a credit. What are we paying this cash for? For the utility bill, so utilities expense. That's the proper way to record that. And you know, in this case, what we have are basically, you know, several expenses that we have. You could see that in a, in a normal example, the business would have many different expenses. This one only has one expense account. And that's just because we're just trying to keep this particular example a little bit uh, simpler. You know, just a small company, you know, one amount involved, one expense account. So that just keeps things a little bit easier. Now, that takes care of all the journal entries for part one. Once I get all my journal entries in place, now I have to move on to part two. Part two, I'm supposed to work with the T accounts. Now, what I've done is to save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and set up all the T accounts in advance. Now, these T accounts, I'm going to have these available on the website as a uh, Excel template that you could use with Excel. I'm also going to have these available as a PDF that you could simply print out and fill them out by hand. Or if you even wanted to on paper, you could just draw a giant letter T and put the name at the top. They're pretty easy to, to set up. But I've set these up in advance just to save time. And what I have to do on part two is take all the activity from all those journal entries and post those activities to the T accounts. 